Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around we're doing something a little bit different. I'm coming to you from Costa Rica. I'm kind of on the road here in between workshop groups, and we're going to try something new. We're on the road a lot, and a lot of times I come up with little ideas I want to share with you guys, and I don't remember to do them when I get home, so we're going to do them on the spot. Just do a couple quick and formal videos when we're on the road when we have the opportunity. This is the first. Hopefully there'll be a lot more to follow. Today's topic is going to be using a gimbal head on a monopod. Now, I know this seems kind of strange because we have this big old gimbal head on a monopod and it's like, why the heck would you put that big heavy thing on top of the monopod? It should look like this. Let me grab a traditional one here. This is our normal head for a monopod and basically it just goes up and down and that's you know kind of all you need because it, this twists back and forth. You can just twist the monopod and then you can put the lens on there. The lens will have a collar and you loosen that and he goes back and forth. Let me show you. Okay, so here we have my 600 F4 D5 mounted on my monopod head. And again, loosen the collar, we can twist. Twist the monopod to go back and forth. We loosen this to go up and down. Seems like it should work pretty well until you let go of the camera. And then what happens? <laughs> and then it falls. And if it's you're trying to keep it one way or the other, it's really bad. Almost got away from me there. So, you know, that's kind of a problem. In fact, you can tighten that up a little bit and you can put some tension on there, but I find that, especially with the heavier gear, I have to have so much tension on there to keep the rig from falling that I start to fight it when I'm going up and down, so it kind of defeats the purpose there. So you're constantly messing with this little knob, and that's where the gimbal head comes in. Okay, so I have my 600 F4, it is mounted to my gimbal head, and aside from the much larger size of the head on the monopod, what's the advantage here? What's the difference? Now first, let's go left and right. I just twist the monopod like I normally would, so that's the same. If I want to go vertical to horizontal, loosen the collar, that's the same. Now up and down, let's go ahead and loosen this knob. Notice that I'm not touching anything, and notice that the camera did not try to flop onto my hand and break my fingers. That's the difference right there. With a properly balanced gimbal head, and by the way, if you want to learn how to properly balance your gimbal head, I have a video, I'll put it in the card above, and it'll teach you exactly what you need to know to balance a gimbal head so it's going to perform like what I'm about to show you. So if I want to point it up and I want to let it go, I can't, and it stays pointed in that direction. If I want to point it down, I can point it down and let go, and it'll stay pointed in that direction. That's the advantage with the gimbal head. It works exactly like it does on the tripod. Now, the big advantage on the monopod, doing it this way, is that I'm not constantly tightening and loosening the little knob or adjusting the tension on it. I can just loosen this up, and I don't have to think about it again. I can just focus on shooting. I find this very advantageous when I'm in a situation where there's action that's kind of coming and going, and I don't want to be like grabbing onto my camera the entire time. I can kind of let go relax, wait for it, and I see action coming, I just grab it, and I start shooting, and I don't have to worry about, oh, where's that knob? I gotta tighten that or loosen that. I'm not fighting it anymore. So that's the reason I like using the gimbal head on the monopod. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that doesn't seem like a very major difference. But a lot of people would also say, like, the difference between something like back button AF and regular shutter release AF doesn't seem like a big difference. And it doesn't on paper. But I can tell you, in the field, if you're a heavy monopod user, this is kind of a game changer. It has been for me. Now, usage is really easy. It's very similar to what you would do with a regular gimbal head, except you're going to go ahead and keep this locked down. Let this one be loose. And the reason we keep this locked down is so that this isn't twisting when you're trying to twist the monopod. Basically, my left and right, I only want to twist the monopod to do that. I don't want this moving along with it. It gets kind of wishy-washy as you're shooting. I think that's a technical term there. So, but anyhow, give this a try. Just, you know, that's how I did it. I had some comments on some of my YouTube videos and they said, hey, Steve, you should try this. And I was like, I don't know. I gave it a try. Absolutely love it. So all, I, all I'm saying is just try it and uh, see what you think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my ebook, Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography and Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System. They're jam-packed with all sorts of great information. I know you're gonna love them. Check them out at the card above. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.